Hey, what's good, everybody? God bless you guys in the name of Jesus. How's everybody doing today? Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I pray everybody's doing amazing and well. I want to talk about all things new. All things new. Hey, God bless you, Jojo. God bless you, Joanne. God bless you, Evelyn. God bless you, Grateful. God bless you, Cheeky. God bless you. God bless you, Christina. God bless you. Praise you the name of the Lord. I want to talk about all things new. Now, when I talk about all things new, I'm talking about what has happened to you. What has happened to you from what has happened from you. From where you've come to where you are. I'm going to talk about the importance of the word re. The word re. For example, revival. Renewal. Restoration. Restore. Reconciliation. Reformed. Renew. See, that word is vital. Why? Why is that word vital? That's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> See, a lot of times when... Yeah, come on, that's it, brother or sister. God bless you, uh, grateful Redeemer. Yes. Good morning, Tina. Re. What's up? What are some other words? Re. Um, there's re resurrection. Now watch this. Before I begin, let's pray. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, I worship you. There's no one like you, Lord. My heart, my mind, my soul, I worship you. I give you glory, Lord. I worship you. There's no one like you. I come before you to sit at your feet, to behold your face, and to receive from your heart, placed within, to give out of my mouth to the heart and the ears of your people, that they too may feast and eat of the revelation by the spirit of what you have given. Father, I thank you, Lord, that everybody that tunes in to this video under the sound of my voice, that the anointing even now begins to lift the burden, begins to destroy the yokes and bring unto their life shalom, the shalom, the peace of you, O oh Lord, in their midst, quieting every storm. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, for your presence, for you are in our midst. Move upon this word, touch this word, touch, touch my lips, use my voice to minister to your people in whom you love. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's talk about Re, let's talk about all things new. Now watch this, brothers and sisters. When you were born again, you and I were born again to what reality? We were brought back into fellowship, into relationship as if the fall never happened. 
See, but it's hard for us because of our human intellect to wrap our mind around that reality. Because of this world and its fallen state, we have this wrestle. We have this feuding going on. And the carnal nature is warring against your spirit nature, who is the real you. See, the carnal nature is no longer your nature, though we have one, but it's no longer what controls you. So that's why when you fight the devil, you fight the devil by standing in the true nature of what you were born again and reconciled to the new man, which all things pertaining to your life in godliness have been made brand spanking new. You are, you are that new car off of the showroom floor that no one has, that no one has drove. Brand spanking new. Now watch this. So why then, brother, why then is it such a struggle? See, it's a struggle is because we lived our lives for so many years in a carnal nature, in a, in a human selfish mindset that we now, because we're born again, have to learn how to re renew we now have to renew our mind to align with what has become brand new in you. See, once we understand that it's become brand, brand new in you and he is for you and the kingdom of God is within you, you have to understand that if everything's going to be okay, Elisa, I see, because once you understand this perspective and you understand that your lenses, our lenses is not from a sin conscious. Our lenses is from the perspective of love. Who is God in us? You remember when they, when, when, when they said you are to name him Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means God with us. See, Emmanuel was coming, not so that that way we can call upon him out here. No, no, no. So that we can release him here. <laughs> so that that way, when, when, when we gather together, we're not saying, Lord, come. He's already here. See, this is the perspective in the mindset of the new man of what has transpired and taken place because of your new creation, your born again experience of what the reality of what the blood has redeemed. Now notice how the blood redeems you. Now watch this. Remember the word re what brings you back to a former state. But watch this. But we weren't there, which is why Christ brings us there. Come on, somebody. See, this is what the church needs to understand and realize and know is that when Christ was going to the cross, he went as you. He took your place. Sin was upon him. That righteousness would be upon you. See, he went as you, not for you. He went as you. Come on, somebody. He went as you. So that's why, my sister, that's why you don't have to worry about sin overcoming you. It's because he loves you. And, and, and watch this. And his love overrides a sinful lifestyle. Because once we understand, my God, you've been so good. My God, I know you love me. Lord, I understand I failed. I understand I slipped up. I understand I missed it. But I know that you love me. Lord, help me in my unbelief to see from the perspective of your love for me that by your love for me, I will walk out a reality that you've paid for me to abide and live from on the daily. See, that's the beautiful nature 
that we now have been brought into as familia, as family. The Bible says that, that he was the firstborn of many brethren. Who is the firstborn? Jesus. Who is your elder brother? Jesus. Come on, somebody. And he brought us into and paid the price for you and me to bring us out of darkness. See, watch this. See, that's why the carnal lifestyle of what we came from is darkness, was darkness. Emphasis was, not is. You no longer are in darkness. And even when and if you slip up, you get back up. Come on, somebody. You get back up. You dust yourself off and you remind yourself, no, 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 no. That's not me. It used to be me, but I can't put that on no more. You want to know why you can't put it on no more? It's because it doesn't fit. <laughs> because it no longer is a part of you. It can't come on you because you are no longer that. You are Christ. You are who Christ has paid for you to be because of the redeemed blood of Calvary and what he brought us into. See, watch this, brothers and sisters. Once we understand that everything that he's doing for you, once you said yes to Jesus, once you married Christ, once you became one with him, once we, once we, be, once we, once we came into union and fellowship with him, that covenant seal now begins to form you. Your identity is in that reality, not who you were not what you used to do, not how you were, and not what has happened to you because all things have been made new. See, the old stuff does not get to go with you and it can't because it passes from darkness to light. See, darkness can't come into light. It Watch this. Darkness can make you believe Darkness can lie to you and, and fire and fire arrows at you to make you believe that you are still in darkness, but darkness cannot, watch this, darkness cannot bring you back to a state that you've been brought out of. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Oh, isn't Jesus wonderful, y'all? This is the beautiful good news of the kingdom is that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ paid a beautiful and an amazing price and he's made you brand new. Now, why the struggle then, brother? Why do I feel like everything is coming against me and why am I still struggling in areas of my life? Is because we need to renew our mind with what has transpired and what is taking place in you. So that that way, the thoughts that come to you are not who you are. Who you are is who is in you, who is transforming you into the very image and likeness of he. Who is he? Christ in you. The what? Hope of glory. What is the hope of glory? What is glory? The manifest, the manifest presence of him. Nigh in your life. Brothers and sisters, he's with you right now. He is closer than you think. He is right now, right next to you. He is right now in you. He is right now surrounding you with his love. He is right now empowering you and giving unto you peace that surpasses all understanding even in the times of our doubts, fears, and unbeliefs, there is a supernatural grace because of his love that he watches over and protects and protects what he loves and who he loves. 
Now, I'm not saying that the enemy doesn't come our way. And I'm not saying that we don't go through some stuff. I'm not saying that we don't endure hardship as a good soldier because we do. I'm not saying that we're bulletproof. I'm not saying that we're, uh, that we're uh, enemy proof, that the enemy's not going to try to come your way because he's going to try to come your way. He's going to try to lie to you. He's going to try to make you and convince you that you still are who, who you've been brought out of. He's still going to try to send lies to you and make you think that that's still you. He's still going to bring th those thoughts your way to bring about fear, condemnation, shame, unbelief, to doubt what is transpiring and taking place. You have to be patient with yourself. You have to understand that, that you being awakened, watch this, your eyes becoming opened to the new man reality of what Christ has done for you and me is a process. Now, we know in that moment when we surrender and we give our lives to Christ, we know that we that we have just transferred out of darkness and into the marvelous light with him. And now that we've transferred into the marvelous light, we now are children of light, no longer children of the darkness. That's why what the darkness says can't stick to you. The darkness, what the enemy's trying to throw your way, see the enemy's trying to make you condemned, shame. trying to make you feel guilty but remember who paid the price for you see the enemy is going to still try to, the enemy is still going to try to remind you and make you think that you're still his but you can't be his when you've been brought up, when you've been brought out of darkness into the marvelous light See, there is a fix there. There is a fix there. Why is there a fix? Is because the devil doesn't have any blood. But God in the flesh, Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, had blood. He came in the flesh and bought and paid the price and has given us the full legal right and the full access, access into a realm and a reality that could only be paid for by what? The redeemed. That, could, that, that the redeemed of the Lord say so. That the redeemed of the Lord live in. That the redeemed of the Lord walk in. That the redeemed of the Lord abide in. See, watch this. See, demons don't have access or Satan doesn't have access to what the blood and even humans upon the earth have dominion and authority and power over. See, why do you think the enemy needs people? He needs fallen people because he has no legal right on the earth because of the authority and the power and the dominion that has been given to man since the foundation, I'm sorry, since the beginning when God placed Adam and his wife in the garden. <coughs> now remember how I talked about re, the word re, restore, redeem. See, he, he, he redeemed us from the curse of the law. He, rec he reconciled us to the Father. Where was it lost? In the garden. So what is Christianity truly about? Being restored to our form former true reality back to the garden 
of his delight, which is in the heart of Christ. Oh. See, Jesus said, those that worship me shall worship me in spirit and in truth. Who is the spirit? Jesus. Who is truth? Jesus. And where, where does he live? On the inside of you and me, but at the same time seated at the right hand of the Father, as are you. And everything, including your enemy, is under your feet. Redemption. To what? Authority. Dominion. And power. Why, brother? Because of sonship. Because you were brought into, because of the blood upon Calvary, you were brought into now the family of God, restored and redeemed into who it was that got broken at the fall, bringing us back into what? Fellowship and union to walk with him, to abide with him, to manifest him on earth as it is in heaven. Where did we hear that before? Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. On earth. What, where were we made from? On earth. As it is. In where? In heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day Jesus, whose body was broken and shed his blood for you and me. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, for thine is the power, and for thine is the glory. What is the glory? It's the manifest presence of God nigh, now, in our midst. Which is why our minds have to now be renewed to Christ in you. The hope of glory being revealed through you. Not that we're trying to get God to come to you. He's already here. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's already here. See, watch this. What is one thing the devil knows? What happens? Watch this. I'm going to show you guys something beautiful. What happens when a, when a body has a spirit? They manifest what? They manifest what? The nature of what it is that they possess. So if the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of you, we shouldn't be worrying about, we, sh we should not be talking so much about um, uh, people manifesting demons. What we should be manifesting is the spirit of the living God. Why don't we ever hear preachers talk about manifesting love, manifesting kindness, manifesting self-control, Man manifesting gentleness, manifesting long suffering, manifesting patience, manifesting compassion, manifesting loving one another. Because that's the nature of our Christ that lives on the inside of you and me, brothers and sisters. See, but what happens is because we live in a fallen world because of the fall in the beginning, 
we have to renew our mind pre, before the fall of what was given to the sons of God, Adam and his wife. You do understand and realize, brothers and sisters, watch this, bear with me. You do understand and realize that Eve didn't even have a name until after they fell. <laughs> God so saw union as one. See, she was given a name after the fall because of now the tear and the separation and the divide that, that took place in the garden that broke the connection with the Father. Which is why Jesus, walk with me, which is why Jesus could not come through the sperm and the seed of a normal man. I need for you to hear me, y'all. See, Jesus came by the sperm and the seed of the Father. Why? Because he was going to become the firstborn of many brethren. Come y'all so that when we became born again we became as he see because when he died at calvary and was stuck upon that tree he wasn't just dying for your sins he was stuck on that cross not for you as you he took your place he says i'm stuck here so that you don't have to be i'm paying it all for you i'm nailed to this cross because i'm taking your place and what is on and who i am and what is on me i'm giving to you it's the great exchange that took place upon Calvary. If our eyes could be open to the realm of the spirit, what truly transpired and took place upon that hill of Golgotha, which is called the place of the... It's called the place of the skull. And what are we to renew? The skull, our mind to align with what has transpired and taken place now by the spirit of truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, all things are made new. See, you have, you have a brand new identity. You have a brand new wardrobe. That old wardrobe, it doesn't even fit you no more. Even if you try to put it on, it can't fit. Because it can only, watch this. Even if you try to put on the old man garment, it can't go on you. It can't go on you because it's from a different realm. Oh, hey, God bless you. God bless you. It's from a different realm. See, that's the trick of the devil. The devil wants to make you think that, you're, that you are in the same realm as he. You are not. <laughs> you, you are not in the same realm as he is. You're above him. See, when Christians upon the land begin to walk in the new man, And you understand that Satan and his demons are subject to you. They will bow down because it's no longer you that lives. It is Christ in you. This is what I'm talking about, about being renewed to that reality. What would it be like if we would begin to think with the mindset of Christ, watch this. Let me let me let, let me teach you something here. Before you came to Jesus, you only had one mind. Now watch this. Before you came to Jesus, 
Watch this. Before you came to Jesus, and for those that are still in the world that aren't born again, they have a mind. Now watch this. But when you but when you come into union and you are born again, the mind of Christ now comes into you that you now possess and have. See, I did a teaching years ago talking about what double-minded truly means. See, people think being double-minded is weighing be between argumentative or intellectual decision. Though that's true and part of, but being double-minded is not that. See, being double-minded is this. Either, either the carnal mind is going to win or the spirit, the mind of Christ is going to win. Whichever mind wins in your life determines the, di the direction and the authority and the freedom that you abide and live out as your reality. Which is why you can't allow the carnal mind to be the leading of your life because the book of James says, if a double-minded man, which is what? A Christian thinking they can use the carnal mind and the mind of Christ to be the to to to, to um, exchange and to connect, it's impossible. The carnal mind and the mind of Christ is, is to be submitted to Jesus. The carnal mind, you do understand and realize it, it does not have the ability and does not want to obey the Lord. Which is why the mind of Christ that you have as a believer in the Lord, you take your carnal mind slave. <laughs> you take those thoughts captive. You are the master of your mind because of the mind of Christ from, from which you have on the inside of you that is now because of your new creation, born again reality, the mind of Christ is what determines and dictates and what leads you into the fruitfulness to receive the promises of God that are yes and amen. The, the, the promises of God are not yes and amen to the carnal realm. The promises of God are yes and amen to the mind of Christ that is submitted to his truth, trusting and obeying and taking heed to his word. So when the book of James says, let, a, let not a double-minded man think that he can and or receive anything from the Lord and he cannot is because we can't have a carnal mind and the mind of Christ thinking that they're friends and thinking that they're really and thinking that the carnal mind is out for your best interest. It is not. The carnal mind is always going to is always going to be the doubt, fear, worry, anxiousness, unbelief, tormenting, lying, and it will get you to doubt the voice of truth from which comes from the mind of Christ. So that's why there is a war. See, and the devil understands this. Now watch this. The enemy, and not just the devil, but the spiritual forces understand this which is why they come to your mind. 
See, they come to your mind to plant thoughts. See, in those thoughts, if we don't catch them right away, if we don't take them captive right away, all of a sudden gets bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger in our life until somebody comes by our way and says to you and says to me, wait a minute, why are you listening to that voice? Wait a minute, you understand that's no longer you. That's not your identity. You're not the carnal thoughts. You're not the carnal lies. You're not the carnal mind. You're not that no more. That is not your identity. Take that off and put on Christ. Take off that doubt. Take off that worry. Take off that fear and put on faith, put on truth, put on hope, put on love, put on goodness, put on kindness, and put on miracles, signs, and wonders, and let the mind of Christ... Come on, y'all. Even when your soul goes kicking and screaming and your flesh goes biting and yelling because your flesh does not want to obey. But you say, no, 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 flesh. I understand what you want to do, flesh, but you will not be leading my life no more. I understand mine. You want for me to make that decision that is not pleasing to the Lord, but I will not do that no more because you don't lead my life no more. The Spirit of God leads me. The mind of Christ leads me. I, I abide only to what the word of truth speaks concerning me and you. Oh, so that's what we are renewed to. And that's why all things become new. They are new. But really they aren't. We are literally just being renewed and restored back to the garden a fellowship, unbroken fellowship with the Father by the Spirit within that you and I possess and have. I know it's hard to understand because of our, our intellectual reasonings and we want to figure everything out but there's things that are by the spirit that can never be obtained and or figured out in the mind but when we read the word your spirit will bear witness to the truth always your spirit on the inside of you now that it is resurrected uh restored, redeemed, revived, bears witness, to, bears witness to the spirit of truth when the anointing of the word goes forth. Even when your mind can't wrap around and or fully understand when the rhema of the word is presented and spoken to you, but something deep down on the inside of you says, you know what? I don't fully understand what he's saying or what she's saying, but something in my spirit bears witness to that. Something deep down on the inside of me who just came alive as if I got a breath of fresh air and I now can breathe differently because the weightiness of this world of what is trying to be placed upon you is broken by the anointing who is Christ. See, the anointing in the old, yes, we understand it represented oil and it means to smear. And they anointed kings. They anointed individuals in the Old Testament. Oh, but not only did Christ come to smear his nature upon you, but he's come to take residence within you. Why? Because he's always been wanting a habitation. He don't want a box no more. He don't need the Ark of the Covenant. He don't want to be put in a box. He don't need for priests to carry a box around no more. You are the priest. 
You are the royal priesthood. You are the peculiar people. You are the new creation, sons and daughters of God that have been brought into this new man mindset reality that is being awakened within you that the spirit of God wants to bring you into so that that way you can experience the fruitfulness of the garden that is now on the inside of you where his presence dwells and walks in. <laughs> <clears throat> Wait a minute, brother. God is walking on the inside of me? Oh, yeah. So you mean to tell me, brother, there's a garden on the inside of me? It's never been about a physical place. It's always been about fellowship in union for God to dwell with his creation. Let us, hmm, let us make man and woman, let us make man and the womb and in our image and likeness so that we down the road, he knew, God knew, that Adam and Eve were going to fail. Jesus, before the foundation of the world, <laughs> already did it. See, it's crazy to think about that Jesus in the garden and read it read it in the book of Genesis because it says watch this when they bait when they bit of the forbidden fruit it says he or they have become like one of us but wait a minute Jesus had not come yet oh uh, you know what I'm gonna read it for you so that way you guys don't you guys don't say that I'm tripping I'm going to read it for you real quick because it's beautiful and it's amazing. And I want for you to understand what the word of God says, y'all. Let's see here. So Genesis chapter 3 verse number 22 and the Lord God said behold where did we hear that word before <laughs> behold watch this the first Adam behold the man has become like one of us The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. See, but the Father and the Holy Ghost don't have that nature. But who did? Jesus, when he came to the earth, where he was tempted and that's why he can be our high priest is because he knows how we feel. It says, he has become like one of us to know how to distinguish between good and evil and blessing and calamity. And now, lest he put his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and he, if he ate from the tree of life in a fallen state, he would have lived forever out of the presence. Oh, but Christ, he comes to redeem it all. So even already, oh, I know this is crazy, y'all. <laughs> so if you look at this, con if you looked at the context and what it is the Bible says here in Genesis 3.22. 
for he was slain before the foundation of the world. But Jesus hadn't yet come. Or did he? <laughs> he has become like one of us. The Holy Spirit don't eat from the tree of, of, of good and evil. The Father doesn't eat from the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil. But who knew good and evil and came walking upon the earth? The Christ. Which is why, again, the reason why God has redeemed man restored man and woman born again wait a minute born again to what the new creation reality of what Christ because of the blood has brought us into his family to restore all things and given unto you power when the Holy Ghost came to live on the inside of you as if nothing were lo as if nothing was lost in or at the garden. It's always been about fellowship, brothers and sisters. So that's what we got to renew our mind to that reality. That is is where the mind of Christ is trying to lead yours and my life in a greater dimension into that reality that we would manifest all creation is earnestly awaiting the manifestation of who? Of who? The sons of God. See, the power of the Holy Ghost that Jesus said, you guys don't, you guys, watch this, I'm paraphrasing, but Jesus in this moment, he said, you don't understand. When I go, I'm not just going to walk with you in a garden. I'm going to, I'm going to possess you with my spirit. And you will be my garden. And your life will be fruitful because of the Spirit of God in me that we can take to this world that is dying, that needs the seed from the sower as we declare and proclaim the good news of the kingdom to the hearts of people that are thirsty and need a drink, that are hungry and need to be fed. So that, so that the gardens of God, because we are one body, become fruitful and multiply everywhere we go. So when people come into your life, they can pick from that tree. They can pick from the tree of life of what it is you partake from and eat from on the daily. And when they hear the good news of the lifestyle live from where it is we abide because we are new creation, sons and daughters of the Lord because of the inheritance of what Christ paid for by his blood. We now get to partake and feast upon the goodness of God going about doing good, healing all who are oppressed of the enemy, casting out devils, raising the dead, setting at liberty those that are bound, wounded, healing the sick, miracles, signs and wonders following the believer, not because of the gifts, because of the Christ that is on the inside of you, not because of an anointing, because of the Christ that is on the inside of you. It is Christ in you. It's not a special anointing. 
It's the Spirit of God in you that manifests from you to His people that He wants to reach. <laughs> that is what God and why God needs you. He needs you, brothers and sisters. He needs your obedience. He needs your faithfulness. He needs for you to step out and to lay hands upon that person. He needs for you to prophesy. He needs for you to encourage. He needs for you to pick up that phone and call that brother, call that sister. He needs for you to gather together in one accord, lifting up the name of Jesus, that the hearts of people by hearing that name shall and will be drawn to him. He needs you. He wants you. He's calling you. Will you answer the call today? Will you walk in the new man mindset? Will you walk in the new creation reality? Out with the old and in with the new. Because if you try to, if you try to bring the new into the old, what does the Bible say? It will burst. It will explode. Then we wonder why we're not having revival is because we're trying to bring the old man and the new man and fix the old man and resolve the old man rather than kill the old man, crucify this flesh so that the spirit can be the leading and bring us into the power of the spirit. See, watch this. Once the enemy knows that you're dead to self, but alive to Christ, there's nothing for him to possess. There's nothing for him to use against you. There's no legal right. Now, watch this. See, we always talk about legal rights in the sense of the demonic. But what about the legal rights that God has given to his children? What about that legal right? What about the legal rights that you can bind and loose on earth as it is in heaven? What about your legal rights that you can say into that mountain, be thou loose, be thou cast into the sea? What about your legal right as a son and as a daughter that has an inheritance and a promise from God that says whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it and so shall you have it. What about the legal rights that heaven because of the blood and because of his spirit that is placed on the inside of you says, agree with me, agree with me, agree with my word, trust me at my word and do not doubt. And watch and see how it is that I shall and will move this mountain, this devil, and get them out of your life once and for all in Jesus' name. It's time that the bride arise. It's time that we take off the old cloak and the old clothes and put on the new man. And put off that old nature that is no longer you. The old nature doesn't have a right in your life because you, you are in a different realm. I know we see each other in the flesh because we're still on this earth, but if you were to see yourself by the Spirit, you are in a different realm completely and entirely not of this world. That darkness doesn't have a right to. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. That's the new things that are coming to the church. There's many ministers upon the land that are being awakened to truth. The truth that we know keeps us free, sets us free, empowers our lives to live out a kingdom reality, not of this world. Oh, the best is yet to come, brothers and sisters. See, what would it be like if people begin to get saved into 
understanding who they are in Christ immediately rather than winging it, hoping something sticks, trying to figure out who they are, falling and failing and failing and falling, making mistakes because they're trying to do Christianity rather than, rather than grow in the new man mindset of what has transpired and taken place because of, of what is now by the spirit of who you are in the light as a children, as children of the light now becoming your reality. Everything begins to change y'all. See the trick of the devil is to make Christians that are sons and daughters of the light, children of the light, is to make them believe and think that they are still in the realm of where the enemy is, but he, but you are not in the realm of where the enemy is, which is why, if the truth be told, when the devil does try to come your way, you have the authority and the power to put him under your feet because of the dominion that Christ has given to you for I've given unto you keys to the kingdom, of the kingdom, to bind and loose on earth as it is in heaven. Because there's no demons in heaven. There's no rights to the de demonic realm in heaven. So as a citizen of heaven, you have the power and the authority as ambassadors and sons and daughters to put the devil once and for all in your life, in your family, underneath your feet. And the door and the seal is shut. And the only thing the devil can do is shoot fiery arrows your way to thoughts, ideas, fake dreams, lies from the pit of hell so that that way he can try to make you believe that what he's doing is more real than what is done i need for you to hear me again the enemy will try to make you believe that what he is doing is more real than what is already done by the spirit in the spirit because of Christ in you the hope of glory that my brothers and sisters is good news the gospel of Jesus Christ and the power of the kingdom that is and has come nigh unto you I know we live in a fallen world I know that we're still going to bump our knee and we're still going to feel things in this flesh but even though we will we will have the trials and the tribulations and we will suffer some things but it does not mean it does not it does not minimize who you truly are as a son and daughter of God by the spirit don't let those things dictate and direct you you are, you remain postured in and upon the Lord and let him be the leading by the Holy Spirit in your life as he teaches you, as he comforts you, as he helps you become made aware and known about more of this reality by the spirit of the new man, of the new creation, of where it is your identity resides from. You are a citizen of heaven already. Heaven is not just a distant place. Heaven is already within you from which you abide and are in. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's here right now. As the Spirit of the Lord right now moves upon your hearts and upon your minds and upon your souls in the name of Jesus, the anointing of the Spirit is moving upon many of you right now by the power of His love, healing that broken heart, healing that wounded soul, touching your body. 
destroying the works of the devil that are that have been trying to lie to you and make you believe that what he's doing is greater than God. The devil is the lie. Holy Spirit, right now, I ask that you touch my brothers and my sisters, that you move upon them, Lord, that you strengthen them, that you empower them, and you give unto them the shalom of the Lord. The shalom of the Lord. See, brothers, we got to be fully persuaded and understand that we carry something. See, you got to know that you carry peace. And the peace that you carry that comes from him, you can give it. You can leave it. So even before I leave this video, I'm leaving the peace of Christ with you, upon you. Oh, I don't just think it. I know it. It's a reality that I live from, that I abide in. See, you have to listen and connect to ministers that are confident in who they are. Not those that are trying to wing it and fake it till you make it. No, I don't want for you to hope and pray. I want for you to pray by faith, knowing that God hears your prayer. Come on, y'all. There's a difference. See, because a lot of times when we have a lot of people that are they're praying the prayer of hope, not the prayer of faith. See, I'm, I'm ministering hope, but I'm ministering faith. So that faith within your heart arises. So that faith within your life arises. So that you are encouraged at the root of the true essence and the nature of who you are in the beloved of the Lord. Christ in you. The hope of the manifestation of his presence in you, upon you and all around you in Jesus name so this peace that Christ by his love has given unto me I leave with you in Jesus name touch touch them Lord move upon them heal them I rebuke Satan and every lie from the pit of hell trying to come against them in Jesus' name. I destroy and dismantle every voice of the enemy that has lied to them, that is make, that's trying to make them and convince them that they're not going to make it. You are going to make it. You shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. And you shall and will declare the works of the Lord, of the goodness of God, of who you are, in the new creation reality of what has transpired and taken place because of the blood of Jesus that is and will always speak better things. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Welcome to the buffet. Welcome to the buffet table of the Lord. I, I pray in the name of Jesus that you feast it at the Father's table today. I pray that you feast it at the buffet and the spread of heaven of what the Lord is trying to bring to his children to awaken your true identity, your true nature that is rooted in the very nature of our Christ who is risen. And when he is risen, you are risen. When we were baptized, we were baptized into his death. But when we came out of that water, we were raised with him in the newness of life. So when you got baptized, guess what? All the sins died in that baptism. When you were baptized into water, guess what? Every demonic oppression died in that water. You drowned those demons just like the, the swine that went into the water. Ah, oh, watch this, y'all. See, the swine going into the water destroyed those devils. <clears throat> See, when you were baptized, you drowned and you destroyed every generational curse. When you were baptized, it can't come up with you. You buried it. Don't let anybody, don't let anyone put anything generational upon you because you buried it in baptism you died with Christ 
And when you came out of that water, generational things can't enter in to the new man. New man, new creation. It don't say new creation. Plus, you still got to carry generations from mama, daddy, grandpa on them. No, 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 no. You are a new man. And that new man is the what is what? The reflection of our Christ. Christ in you and you in him, he in you. Don't let preachers lie to you all. I understand it sounds good. It, it sounds very, it sounds convincing. I used to believe that lie too. I used to believe in that thing too. I used to believe like that. I come out of that y'all many years ago when the Lord took me on a journey about understanding sonship, understanding your, it's not a word, but daughtership, understanding who you are as a daughter. See, the when you are adopted, that identity takes on a new form. Especially when it's paid for by the blood of Christ. But the lie from the enemy even through the mouth of preachers will convince you and make you believe a lie that is not true. And they don't do it, brothers and sisters. They don't, now hear me, don't get mad at them because they're not doing it. They, they, they truly believe that it's real. But understand and realize they're teaching you what they know based upon what the church has taught them not what the Spirit of the Lord says concerning and through His Word of what has transpired and taken place in the new man, in the new woman. See, that's why even preaching on baptism is so very important. And I tell people this, you do understand that when you go into that water, everything, your generations, I don't care if you were Santaria, warlock, witchcraft. I don't care if you were voodoo. I don't care if, you know, mama and them had bones in their nose. I don't care if, if, if they were, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Indians and Aztecas and, uh, you know, Mayans and doing all kinds of sorcery. It don't matter because when you go on that water, all of that is going to be buried and it cannot come up with you because what is coming up with you is the only thing that paid the price for you and that is Jesus Christ. And the power of what the blood at the cross of Calvary has done for you and me. And like I said, brothers and sisters, don't get mad at those preachers because they just don't know. I didn't know. I used to preach that stuff too, y'all. I used to tell people they had generational curses too until I understood what the new man in Christ truly is. I used to do it too, so I don't blame nobody because I was deceived in that area of my life, even in ministry, until the Lord took me on a journey and he began to show me. He began to show me who I was in him and who he was in me. Amen. That's who you are. You're a new creation. Behold all things. What, brother? Come on, brother. No, brother. I'm bringing my generations with me. Behold all things have become. What? Brand spanking new. Come on, brother. God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he has to or, and or shall repent. Has he not spoken it? Shall he not bring it to pass? He paid the price once and for all at Calvary. And he says, come, son, come, daughter, and let me lead you into this newness of life of what I paid for you to live from as a reality. Ah, oh, that's freedom, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, because, come on, man. 
See, this is I'm trying to I'm trying to help the body of Christ not just be free, but to live in the freedom and the peace of our Lord. See, people ask me, why are you so passionate about sonship and identity? It's because I was deceived for many years in ministry. I used to believe so many lies, y'all. I thought that's really what it is that Christians had a fight until I understood the battle's already won and it's finished. I just had to rest in what? In my Lord who fights the battles for me. See, my fight is to what? Stand. Read the armor of God. It don't say fight. It says when you've done all that you're known to do, stand therefore, stand. So wait a minute, brother. So I'm the armor up just to stand? Yeah, because when you have the armor on, it's Christ. And when you have Christ on, it declares to the spiritual realm, one, victory is done. The battle. Now, I'm not saying that you won't feel some things, that you won't feel the turbulence. I'm not saying that you won't feel the, the enemy trying to come against you. But even when it does, you say, Lord, I, I trust you. Lord, I worship you. Oh, how I love you. How I love you. I worship you. How I love, how I love, how I love. I worship you. I bring all of my care, all of my worry, I worship you. I behold your face. I behold your face. Oh, how I behold your face. I worship you. There's no one like you. There's no one like you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. How I love, how I love, how I love you, oh Lord. <laughs> I promise you, you go to giving Jesus adoration and the times when you feel things trying to come upon you, that devil will up and leave because God inhabits the praises of his people and when God arises, his enemies scatter. God inhabits the praises of his people. And when God arises, his enemies scatters. You go to giving Jesus praise in the midst of that devil trying to speak to you. You go to giving Jesus adoration when that when that lion devil is trying to tell you that, that, that you're not going to make it. You just go to thanking the Lord as if it's already done. You go to giving him praise as if, it's the, as if the, the battle and the victory is already done because it is. Just don't lose your focus. I understand the turbulence. We can feel it. I understand we can feel that devil when he tries to come around. But in that moment, even if you got tears running down your cheeks and, and your heart is broken and your soul is wounded from the things that have been coming your way, you just say, Lord, even in the midst of my brokenness, even in the midst of my hurt, even in the midst of not figuring everything out, Lord, I worship you. I worship you. How I worship you, I worship you. How I love you, how I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Oh, I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. I love you, I love you, I love you. How I love you, I love you. Thank you for loving me. 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 Thank you for never giving up on me. Thank you for never giving up on me. And you remind the Lord in the midst of your adoration and praise so, you, you can, so that you can hear the voice of His Spirit singing through you, reminding you, it's all gonna be all right. It's all gonna be all right. It's all gonna be all right. 
it's all going to be all right. I'm here and I'm fighting the battle for you. Just stand strong and stand strong and be sturdy. Be sturdy, be sturdy, be sturdy. Trust and believe and know that I'm working it out for your good and know that I'm fighting this battle on your behalf and for you. This battle don't belong to you. It is mine, saith the Lord. You don't have to fight this fight. It is mine. And the battle and the victory shall and will be won. You don't fight it in your strength. You don't fight it in your ability. You fight it in the rest of the Lord. Standing with all the armor on. Knowing that it's already won. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Oh ya na 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 ye ya 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 na ye ya na 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 ye ya na na na. Oh ya na na ye ya 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 na 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 ye. Oh, I worship you. Oh, I worship you. <sighs> oh, let him come close. Let him love you. Let him love you. He's not afraid of that hang up. He's not afraid of that shortcoming. He's not afraid of that sin. Love on him. Let him love on you. And let him push out what is not of him. He will help you overcome everything that you need, brothers and sisters. Trust and believe that. I know as long as we live in this flesh, there's always going to be a war. There's always going to be a battle. But we don't let this speak on our behalf. We let this. Right here. We let the rivers of living water align with truth by His Word come out of our mouth to declare over you who you are. You are who God says you are. You're not who that man says. You're not who that woman says. You're not what that you're not what that backslidden somebody says. No, you are who God says you are. You're not who the devil says you are. You're not that hang up, you're not that failure, you're not that disappointment. You're not you're not that or what it is that you can't find in the word of what God speaks concerning you. So wipe off that shame today. Take off that Take it off. That, that garment no longer belongs to you. You put on beautiful righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. That is your portion today and always in Jesus' name. Well, I love you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a beautiful and an amazing day. May the peace of our Lord and the power of our Christ. Bless you. Bless your children. Bless your family. Bless your sons, your daughters, your husbands, your wives, your moms, your dads, your cousins. Those that are near and dear to your heart. Stay rooted and grounded in Christ. Don't let the lies of the enemy and the lies of man rob you of what you already possess and have because of the inheritance of Christ the inheritance and the provision of heaven that's, that has already been made available for you and to you now we just align with his word stand by his truth and walk it out as a daily reality in the beloved of the Lord amen I love you all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, love. God bless you. God bless you, John. God bless you, John. Blessings in, in Jesus' name. Have a beautiful and amazing day, brothers. God bless you, uh, Cheryl. God bless you, Monique.
God bless you guys. God bless you, Crystal. God bless you, Desi. In Jesus' name. <coughs> God bless you, Carmen. God bless you, Carol. God bless you, Olga. Have a beautiful and amazing day. God bless you, Sissy. In Jesus' name. God bless you, Anita. Thank you for the rose. Thank you. God bless you, Glue. God bless you, Rena. God bless you, Shez. Blessings, y'all. I love you and I appreciate you. God bless you, Rachel. Thank you so much. I love and I appreciate you all. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, John. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, brother. Amen. Amen. Love you all. Thank you for the rose. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not sure what that rose means, but it, praise the Lord. It's awesome. Amen. God bless. God bless in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Thank you, sissy. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. God bless you, Monique. God bless you all. Until next time. Remember who you are, the new man in Christ Jesus. The old man, he's gone. He's bye-bye. <laughs> the old man, he's bye-bye. He's gone. Amen. But the thoughts is what we have to take captive because the thoughts still remember the old man. That's why the thoughts have to be renewed in the new man. You see what I'm saying? Amen. See, that's why our mind has to be renewed to the new man. But it remembers the old man. That's why we grow out of things. Because we are trained now in the new man to align with what the mind of Christ is awakening, is awakening us into as our new reality of what the blood of Jesus that speaks better things over you and me. Amen. God bless you all. That's right. A new creation indeed. Amen in Jesus' name.